Welcome to ESB Science Blast. We'd like to share some of our top tips for your investigations. In this video, we'll describe some of the scientific habits that will help you create fair tests and controlled experiments. What makes science an especially powerful way of understanding the world is that you can't just make up facts or rely only on your personal opinions. Everything scientists claim has to be backed up with evidence. Evidence that can be examined and repeated by other people. Such information is collected through careful measurements, observations and experiments. Creating a fair test is one of the important ways that scientists build evidence that is reliable and meaningful. So what makes an experiment a truly fair test? The best way to explain is with an example. Karina and Alex have taken up the challenge of settling a debate about which washing liquid is the best at cleaning clothes. They're planning a scientific experiment that will test and compare three of the brands that claim to have amazing abilities to remove stains at low temperatures. They have three pieces of white cloth and have decorated them with a number of common stains that can be hard to shift. Their basic plan is to wash each stained cloth with a different liquid and compare the results. All sounds good so far, but in order to make this a proper scientific investigation, they need to look very carefully at all the details. At the end of the experiment, they need to be as sure as they can that any differences they see can only be explained by the performance of the washing liquids. They can only be sure of this if they identify all the things that they need to keep the same in each of the washing tests. Which variables, as scientists like to call them, do you think they need to keep the same in all three washing tests? Here's our list of variables. How does it compare to yours? To make this whole experiment a fair test, you need to try and make sure that the only variable that changes between each test is the type of washing liquid. So, Karina and Alex's experiment is now in better shape and looking very scientific indeed. But there's one further step that could take it to another level. That's by adding a control experiment. In this case, they would do it by adding a fourth test that will be the same as all the other tests, but with one crucial difference. They would wash another stained cloth without using any washing liquid at all. What extra information do you think they could gain from doing this? Control experiments can sometimes seem like a strange thing to do, but they give extra support to scientists' explanations. By having a control test, Karina and Alex can show that it is in fact the washing liquid and not the water that is doing all the work in removing the stains. In science, it's a good idea to assume as little as possible. Scientists testing new medicines use control experiments as often as they can. People usually volunteer to test new medicines and see if it makes them feel better. For example, if the medicine is in the form of a tablet, the researchers may give some of the volunteers a control tablet. This tablet looks the same, but it actually doesn't have any of the medicine in it at all. In a good experiment, the volunteers will not know if they have the real medicine or the control tablet. Why do you think scientists do this? How might it help them be more sure of their results as they test a medicine? Some people report feeling better just because they swallow a tablet, even if there is no medicine in it. Scientists call this the placebo effect. By using a control test, they can work out whether any improvements people feel are being caused by the medicine or if it's just the placebo effect. The final thing you need to know about designing fair tests and control experiments is that this approach does not apply to every kind of science investigation. It all depends on what your question is. For example, 
If you're designing an experiment to estimate how many helium balloons it might take to lift a real house, the idea of creating a fair test and a control experiment won't make much sense. So be wise and watch out for opportunities to make your results more meaningful by using fair tests and control experiments.